What's up everybody and welcome to our new video. First of all, I want to thank everybody who watched our first two videos and gave us some feedback. With the feedback, we can improve our content and make it more pleasing for you guys. Today, we're going to show you something really cool. It is the Tilta Float. In this video, we show you how to set up everything from the camera to the gimbal and at the end on the Tilta Float. In our example, we are using the Blackmagic 6K Pocket and the Tokina 11-20 T2.9. I know this is going to be a long one, but for those with no patience, we have marked everything in the video or in the description below. According to Tilta, the float system will work with the following gimbals. DJI Ronin S, Feiyu AK4500, Moza Air, Moza Air Cross, and Zune Crane. But Tilta Float is not the only gimbal support system on the market. There are other competitors like the Thanos Pro from Digital Photo or the G2G505 from Glide Gear. Those are also available. Jason Morris made reviews of those systems. We have linked his videos in the description below. The biggest advantage in the Tilta Float system is that they have many different accessories which you can pair it with to rig your setup. In the box you will get the following items. The Tilta Float system arm, the Tilta Float system post, the power supply base plate for RS2 with cable, two pin to two pin limo cable, the Tilta Float system V-mount battery plate, Tilt the float system support vest with a shoulder strap, the wireless thumb controller for the RS2, the wireless control receiver module for the RS2, Tilt the float system monitor bracket, the Tilt the float system carrying case, tilting adjustable cold shoe phone mounting bracket, a tool for the Tilt the float system, Tilt the float system cross NATO rail post mount which is stowed inside here underneath the arm, the Tilta Float System Baby Pin Docking Adapter. Before we can start assembly, we first need some accessory which are not included in the Tilta Float. The first thing is the Tilta Cage for the Blackmagic 6K Pocket. Then we need the small rig mounting clamp, the small rig counterweight kit for DJI, a GoPro Black Edition 5, 6, 7 or 8 battery, two one quarter screws and an SSD. The SSD is optional, you can also use a CF card for saving your videos. And the GoPro battery is for the wireless remote control for the Tilta Float. Mid-production I forgot to mention that you're going to need a cheese plate to mount the TB50 battery pack onto the Tilta Float with this Nato rail, otherwise you can't balance it properly. Now back to the video. So now you can put everything together. The first thing is you put the camera inside the cage. After that, you can put on the SSD, plug in the cable and tighten the screws. Now you can put on the two screws inside the base plate and position them at the middle in the second hole here. Just like that. If we're done, it should look like this. And we need two screws because if you just use one screw, it's very wobbly and it's very unstable. Now that the camera is ready, we can mount everything onto the gimbal. But first you have to take the plate and slide it in. Because it is not possible to mount the camera on the plate first and then slide it in. Now we can put on the weight. You can slide it behind the plate, right at the end. And screw on the first weight on the right side. Then on top in this hole. The clamp you can put on the outside of the gimbal. Make sure to tighten it on so it doesn't move. Now we can put on this part, which holds the rod for the follow focus. If it's interfering with this, you can just loosen it up a little bit and then tighten it up afterwards. Then you can put in the rod and secure the rod. Then you can put on the 
follow focus. Then we take the lens support. We use the most outer hole for this. It is impossible to put on the lens support without it touching the focus, the aperture or the zoom. So just tighten it on, it doesn't have to touch it. But we're going to secure it behind the lens with this leather strap. We need this because if it's generate any vibration, it gets very instable. Now we can plug in every cable. First the HDMI onto the Raveneye, into the HDMI of the Blackmagic. Now we can plug in the USB-C cable. First one is for the remote control from the Raveneye. The second one, I'll take the short one, the angled one. This one is for the power for the Raveneye. And the last one is for the focus motor. After we put everything onto the gimbal, we can now start balancing. In the beginning, we start to remove the lock. Also, this lock. So we can position it a little bit to the front because it's too back heavy. If it's too front heavy, which I don't think is happening on this brick, you have to put it a little bit back until it stays in this position. Then you can lock it up, put the camera on this position. It is now too front heavy on this side, so we can open up this one. it a little bit up, still too front heavy, oh, it looks not that bad, with this weight just minor adjustments will make a huge difference. It takes a little bit of practice but after you get used to it get it pretty fast. I think this is now perfect. Now I'm locking it up. If it's perfectly balanced it should stay in every position without tilting at all. So now we can lock this one back up. After we finish this side we can start on this one. Make sure to hold everything before you open up the lock open up this one and just position it so that the gimbal doesn't move at all and stay horizontal. If it stays horizontal, you can lock everything up. This side of the motor, you can open up this lock and open up this one and tilt the camera onto the side. If it's not, for example, too much behind, then it will turn. You have to make sure that it stays in the middle. Now that this side is also balanced, you can lock it up on this side and open up every other lock and turn on your gimbal. On the screen you can press on this side to check if the motors are getting too much stress on it. If it gets too much stress on it you will see it right here, the roll axis or on the tilt. If everything is fine, you can start calibrating it with the press on this side and start calibrating. This takes a little while and makes some weird noises, but it's totally fine. 
that's the regular process. All right, it is finished. You can check the motors on the screen and try to put it in every position. It should not vibrate or do any weird noises. Now it's ready for putting it onto the tilt -of float. Now the first thing you want to set up is the battery pack. For this, if you have a Ronin 2, you probably have the battery pack already. You just have to put on this metal bracket. And with that, on the other side, you're going to need the cheese plate and this knot array with the two screws. You gotta take those out. And with the cheese plate, you are going to place it like that and put in the screws on here. After the cheese plate is secure, you can grab the V-mount plate and take this part out and this part out. We mount this one onto the cheese plate and afterwards this Noto clamp onto this one. All right, now you can take this Noto rail and slide it inside. Now you can mount it on the pole. Just open up this lock. Slide it in. Right. Now you can grab your already balanced gimbal and the battery adapter. On the battery adapter, you're going to put on the Noto rail in this position and also mark the center of those screws because this is the center of gravity and also mark it outside so you know where to place the Noto rail after you put it on the tilt float So now you can remove the upper part of the gimbal and detach it from the battery pack. Put this away for now. And then you can attach this onto the gimbal head and slide this whole thing with the DC out and the DC out in from here facing to you towards you and slide it in and now you can see the marking here and position it perfectly in the middle I have to turn it on for me now like that and lock it up in this position. And now, just position it into the middle. And now, you can plug in the two pin Nemo cable and take this bracket, slide it onto the gimbal and put this one inside here. So everything is secured. So now make sure that you remove the lens cap and put everything what you need onto the gimbal because now you're going to balance the pole. Now it's very front heavy. So you have to extend the battery side until the pole stays horizontal. Also here, minor adjustments will make a huge difference because of the weight. As I said, you have to put everything on both sides. I forgot to put on the D-tab. I recommend you to wrap it around one time. 
and then plug it in just like that. Now it's a little bit heavy on the battery side, so I have to adjust that again. So now you can turn on the battery pack, open up the gimbal, and turn it on. As you can see, the pole wants to turn on to the left. So I'll open up this lock and adjust this nut rail. It's now really turning on both sides if it's not centered. So I'll put the weight down, but I recommend you to turn it, open it up and reposition the battery pack like that. Until the pole starts to get repositioned to the center, but quite slow enough. So I'm going to slide it more downwards. All right, this is very important because if you're going to pan down and up. The gimbal won't overreact and control it by itself. Okay. So now, now that that is finished, we can start putting on our vest and the arm. But for that, we are going outside. So see you there. Now that we are outside, I can show you how to assemble the vest. First, you attach this bracket. This is for the arm. Slide it in like that and make sure to lock it. Then you take the back support and slide it over the top just like that and lock it up also. Make sure that it's secure. Now you can start wearing your belt or the vest. Make sure that it's secure, it doesn't slide down. Then you can take the arm and screw it on to the side. Just like that. Then you can take, all, take the pole and put it onto the arm. So now what you're looking for is that the arm stays horizontal. So you have to adjust the strength of the uh, springs in order to compensate the weight. So now if I let go of the arm, it tends to move forward. So in order to compensate that, I'll put down the pole and use this one and move it a little bit up. And see how it reacts now. Okay, I think that's good, but it's still moves to my left, so in order to compensate that, I'll have to change this one, open it up, and turn it a little bit, make sure that it's secure. Maybe get a little bit tension on it to see if it still turns. If it stays, it's perfect. So now we can try again. Okay, it's good to me now. So now the gimbal is already on. 
I can start up the remote control with the button underneath here. And also I will turn on the RavenEye and connect my phone, put it onto the phone mount. Okay. And now we can start shoot. In the first test I've tried to float on the stairs. The steps were not very high so it was relatively easy to handle by walking up. I've had some trouble by walking down, you will see this in some shakes in the shot. After that I've tried to run with the float, this was pretty hard to coordinate if the surface you are running on is not flat and you try to frame the shot simultaneously. The shots came out not very stable as you can see, but I think with a little bit more practice this is possible to get very stable. We also went to the skate park with Yannick, a very talented skater from Basel and we've got some very cool shots, so we made a little reel with them. So there are some pros and cons about this setup. The pros are, for example, the build quality. It is really well built and also it is very modifiable. You can see some videos from Best Buy Adam and camera rigging mods, how they modified the setup for the tilt of float. The cons are the size of it. Uh, if you are a regular gimbal operator, and you are on a very tight space, this is probably something you can't get into your tight space. You can adjust the pole and also the center of gravity, but this is also limited uh, of the weight you can put behind the battery pack. And it is not very beginner friendly. So if you're new to steady cams or gimbals, you have to learn how to balance it properly Otherwise, you will waste a lot of time balancing it on production. So probably try test it out, maybe balancing it at home before you use it into in a production. I recommend this to people who want to shoot very steady shots with their cameras while they were while they are running or have to move at some steps because it's very hard to get very stable shots with the gimbal if you try to compensate the up and down movement with your hands. Also, if you shoot a long time, it can really strain your back muscles. So this is the best way to take off some weight from your arms and the back. And the last point is if you want to shoot some special angles, for example, if you want to pan it down, get some really low shots or want to get really high with the rig it is really nice to get really stable shots and also reach those angles which you otherwise have issues or get in weird positions so that's it about the tilt of float if you have any questions please let us know in the comment section below or if you have any suggestions about our rig how we could set it up in a better way or like different methods please let us know and i will see you in the next video peace